he chose me in him before the foundation of the world i'm talking about serving god you don't have much time you think you got time life is going to change you're gonna to have to know him you're gonna to have to put up a shut up these are the last days we got to get a spirit of esther on us that declares for this cause amen for this cause right now i'm on my way to see the king for this cause if i perish let me perish where you going esther i'm on my way to see the king i'm gonna cry yeah but we've been endure for a night but joy i just want you to know i wipe you mommy and daddy i'm transhuman i said i'm not comfortable with my body so i want to get rid of it i don't want to be flesh i'm really sorry but i'm gonna escape this thing and become digital one day soon they'll have clinics in switzerland where you can go and you'll sign a form and they'll take your brain and download it into the cloud here's a list of animals that have been cloned not on that list humans yet so, so just, we just so, so just sorry you go i want to talk to you about the coming technological singularity I want to talk to you about transhumanism. I want to talk to you most specifically about the coming human enhancement revolution because, ladies and gentlemen, unknown to probably most people literally around the world today, there are people who are dedicated. Now, we're talking about from executive levels of governments on down. We're talking about national leaders, military leaders, academia, uh, some of the world's most famous philosophers, and they are committed to what can only be thought thought of as fulfilling the next step in human evolution. We are going to brain machine interface ourselves with strong artificial intelligence systems that may even allow us to communicate with God, they think. We are going to, at the germline genetic level, we are going to permanently undo DNA in humans as it has been understood, and we are going to create a superior model. We are going to use genetics, robotics, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, synthetic biology, neuropharmacology. We are going to use those now to create schemes around the Aryan super race. What Nietzsche, the uh, German philosopher, could have only imagined in his writings about the uber mention, the superhuman of tomorrow. And what you need to know first is this dream is no longer considered to be fringe. From national laboratories on down, U.S. budgets this year, last year, the year before, there is a blueprint being devised. Your tax dollars are flowing in. I think Hollywood is absolutely in love with the idea of human cloning. They can sort of use it as the archetypical villain. Cloning fears play on a couple of things. They sort of challenge our notion of uniqueness and individuality. They also sort of raise the issue of, uh, well, how much of who we are can be duplicated or replicated or manufactured. This is the front page of the GF 2045 Global Futures uh, website in New York uh, at the Lincoln Center. This was a gathering of the world's top futurists, top scientists, top genetic uh, engineers, philosophers, people like Ray Kurzweil, uh, who came from all over the world. They gathered to convene there. And what did they come there to discuss? Towards a new strategy for human evolution. This is happening at Oxford. University, Stanford University, all of our leading universities now are hosting what they're calling transhuman conferences. They believe that not only are we going to alter our physiology and not only are we going to alter our neurology, but that by so doing, we are going to change ourselves spiritually. We are going to create a new form of human that will literally uh, communicate with God in ways that Christianity has never even dreamed of. Here's the Washington Post. Mice, men, and in-between scientists debate blending of human-animal forms. Here's the New York Times. Merely human? That's so yesterday. Here's Counterpunch. The Pentagon plan to create mutant super soldiers. Here's the Center for Bioethics and Human Dignity on the future of the human species. Here's Discovery News talking about part human, part machine transistors being built. Here's the Danger Room. The Pentagon looks to breed immortal synthetic organisms. That's what I referred to a moment ago. I think what we need to be worried about is efforts to improve, enhance, and optimize human beings, either by putting technology into them or by changing their genetic makeup. I think we have much more to worry about with cyborgs than I do clones. 
in recent years, the Case Western Reserve Law School had been the recipient of $773,000 from the NIH. The NIH is the largest department of its kind in the U.S. that gives your tax dollars for this kind of research. But why did they give uh, Case Western Reserve Law School nearly a million dollars? It was so this character somewhere right here, Professor Maxwell Melman, the lead bioethicist at Case Western Reserve Law School, could lead a team of law professors, that's very important, scientists, bioethicists, other interested and qualified parties for one purpose, really, two-year project to develop standards for tests on human subjects in research that involves the use of genetic technologies to enhance normal individuals, to make them smarter, to make them stronger. And notice this little eugenic caveat, to make them better looking. What's the connection between our mortality and our morality? Alternatively, I think about a limited lifespan for a person to live as long as he or she um, desires or is capable. And if not, then, then cryonics is an alternative until uh, later medicine can catch up with the disease. I think we're in the transhuman era, where the transhumanist era is about a human in transition to becoming something other. Now, what is that other? That could be an evolved human. It could be a human merging with artificial intelligence. So immortality, no limited lifespan, yes. Redefining death, we've been doing that for eons, determining when someone dies and then we find out, oh, we we could have cured that. We used to hold a mirror up to someone's nose, listen to their heart. We can, you know, bring people back to life that 100, 200 years ago, even 50 years ago, were considered dead. Develop the guidelines that will be used for a setting public policy, that is, the law. And how will the law need to be amended in order to extend constitutional and Bill of Rights privileges to human non-humans, which I mentioned earlier. These are humans who have been sufficiently genetically altered so as to no longer be considered to be human at all. The Brookings Institute, they're doing the same thing right now, writing the con future of the Constitution series. They literally talk about near future gay Gattacas, genetically engineered uh, homosexual communities. Uh, I've understood that part of the transhumanist dream could represent an existential risk. That means it could wipe out all life on earth, and Professor uh, Melman admits it. He says, yes, the road we're going down could indeed lead to the eradication of all life on earth, but the genie's out of the bottle. There's no way to put it back in. We're already doing it, and there's no way to stop. This train has already left the building. So North Carolina is one of the top locations in the world for the creation of genetically modified organisms, genetically modified animals, genetically modified crops, N uh, North Carolina State University. And they're talking about transgenic trees. A transgenic creation is when you take the genetic material from one living species and you genetically engineer it into the, tra uh, the genetic material of another living species, something that that cannot hap, uh, happen naturally. Some transgenic trees have been created that have human enzymes in them. Furthermore, we are raising rice crops in the United States right now that you're going to wind up eating that have human genetic material in them. So that's how far that train also has left the building and still would barely scratch the surface on the peer-reviewed medical journal reports, peer-reviewed science journal reports, line items in budgets like this year's DARPA budget that not only last year's budget not only had millions of dollars for creating the blueprint to edit our soldiers' DNA, but it had millions of dollars for bio-design, which is the creation of a new synthetic form of life that will be militarized and it will be immortal, according to DARPA's own budget. We should think of our genome as a kind of diary, but not a diary that has been written upon yet which means that you, version 2.0, would have a very different set of experiences than the original you. Some of the top scientific advisory panels that give advice to the U.S. Pentagon and the Department of Defense, among them there are those who believe that the human enhancement revolution represents the next arms race. That's how serious they are about it. By the way, Iran has some of the most sophisticated laboratories doing research into this of anybody in the world. That the $100 
smaller genome, implications for the Department of Defense. In it, they talk about genotype and phenotype. And if you remember your basic biology from school, genotype, that's what you inherit from your parents, right? That's, that's your genetic blueprint. That's, what, that's why you were born a human and not a dog, because of your genotype. But phenotype, that's how it is expressed externally. It's how you walk. It's how you talk. It's why you're bipedal. It's your characteristics. It's your instincts. And the Jasons are saying to the Department of Defense, as we begin modifying people at the genotypic level, we are going to modify them phenotypically. In other words, they're going to walk different. They're going to act different. Their characteristics are going to be different. They may become more animalistic. And they're saying, you've got to get ahead of this technology because our enemies, our competitors are developing it at breakneck pace. And in the very near future, according to them, this decade won't elapse. My scientific research, the scientist part of me, proved that long-term memory does exist in simple animals uh, after cryopreservation or vitrification. What Balaban did was he took the developing brain matter of embryonic quail and he genetically engineered it into the developing brain matter of embryonic chickens. And when the chickens were born and they began to grow, they started exhibiting the head bobs and the vocal trills of quail. And what his experiment illustrated is that very, very complex behavior patterns can be transferred from one species to another species through genetic engineering. So that transition to becoming a post-human, but not non-biological, not some avatar, some mm -hmm. automata no. out there, but a, uh, a human that's in the stage of post-biological meaning, not having a shelf life, not limited by our genetic makeup. The top intelligence agencies of the U.S. working with the top intelligence agencies of uh, Europe and produced this report. Now, what's this report about? This report tries to imagine by 2025, so with what might be a threat that would cause all of the nations of the world to suddenly have to come together in a one-world government in mutual defense of one another. What might the scenario be that would suddenly cause all of us to have to rush together to try to protect ourselves from some unprecedented uh, threat? And so they talk about the possibility of suddenly we detect an asteroid, and an asteroid is headed towards the Earth. It's going to be here in one year. All of a sudden, we need everybody on Earth to come together to try to come up with some kind of a defense. They talk about uh, the collapse of the global economy when the top intelligence agencies of the U.S. got together with the top intelligence agencies of Europe and said what within the next 12 years could pose an existential threat to all life on earth. Among them, they included the emergence of a new form of mankind. The thing about cryon is it's, it's, it picks up where today's medicine leaves off. Mm -hmm. It's not some science fiction dream. It's based on evidence-based science. It works. We brought back C. elegans, and that, that is a fact. We are explorers, and as a species, as homo sapiens sapiens. Mm -hmm. And um, we have the ability now, through the use of ethical technology and evidence-based science, to carve a, what I consider, a more apt, a more intelligent, a more ethical, a more humane society. And that's the whole reason behind transhumanism. All of the ancient records, both biblical and extra-biblical, tell us that they tinkered with the genetics of humanity. They did exactly what we are doing in laboratories all around the world now. They crossed over the species barrier. And ladies and gentlemen, it didn't end very well.